Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. My name is Dale and in today's video we're going to talk about DNOs, G98s, G99s, G100s. What does it mean when you're getting battery, solar, wind, even EV chargers? So thanks for tuning in this video. So the reason for the video is I've done a few videos in the past, about four or five years ago when I originally did my solar install and in the process of doing another one at the moment. And that question often comes up from other people who are interested in solar is the installers have said I need a DNO or an LOA or a G99 or a G100 or what does any of this stuff mean? So I thought I'd just do a short video to explain from my understanding and my perspective what those things are. As per other videos, I'm not a solar installer or anything. It's just based on my own research and passion for the things. So just to give some context, you, you'll get asked or spoken about something to do with DNOs, whether you're installing solar, battery storage, you should also do a DNO disclosure when you have an EV charger installed as well. I think lots of people don't realize that or it doesn't happen. You don't need approval, but you do need to let your DNO know. Um, and also if you are doing wind turbines or even um, you know water turbine, uh, hydro as well is my understanding. But most commonly here in the UK for residential, it's gonna be solar, battery, or wind that um, potentially gonna have to get DNO approval for. So what does DNO stand for? DNO stands for Distribution Network Operator and depending on where you live in the UK it is going to be a different company. So I'll just pop that up onto the screen right now. Where I am in the West Midlands uh, which is box five on here it's National Grid. Uh, and one only caveat to that which I found out at my last house even though National Grid was the DNO for the region because I lived in a new build apparently lots of new builds get uh, their own kind of little mini um, DNO. So I think it was GTC or GTE or something uh, at the last house. So that may be a situation that you find yourself in. If you're in a new build, you think it's National Grid, but it isn't. But there's a link, I'll put that down in the description. You can go there and find out who your DNO is. But obviously, hopefully the installer will be sorting all that out for you as well. That brings me on to the next point. When you do decide on your solar installer, they are gonna ask you for an LOA, which is a letter of authority. That's a legally binding document that gives them permission and approval to reach out to the distribution um, network operator on your behalf to request permission um, for solar. I don't know if it's still the case. My understanding, at least when I got solar previously, is you really don't want to sign a letter of authorization to any installer until you've decided that they are the installer for you. Because my understanding in the past was it kind of, because it is a legally binding contract, will kind of link you in to having to go with them. So be, I'm still a bit wary if when I'm getting quotes, um, an installer says, hey, please sign this letter of authority and I can help um, give you a quote. Because I think it might kind of put all your eggs in that one basket. So that's one thing to be aware of. So. We know what DNO is, we know what the LOA is. Uh, why do we have to reach out to the distribution network operator? Well, there's three reasons really. First of all is to make sure that um, your install is compliant with ENA standards. So to make sure everything's safe, you know, you're safe um, as a consumer. Also people working on the electricity network are safe as well. Also need to make sure that your installation you're having installed um, maintains the grid harmony. So even if you've got solar and batteries, you're never fully off grid unless you're fully isolated. There's always some harmonization between your installation and the grid. And then finally, just to make sure the distribution network can kind of think of future growth, uh, future growth and future proofing. So obviously with more people having batteries and home generation, it's becoming more and more of a thing. So Depending on what solar solution you're going for, this is where you're gonna hear about the G98s or the G99s or the G100. If you've had a previous install, you might have heard the G83 and the G59. So the G83 has been superseded by the G98 and the G59 has been superseded by the G99. So we'll start off with the G98. 
to start with. So the reason you'd be asked to um, do a DNO G98 form is if you have had solar installed, and now that's the key bit there, you've had it installed already, so you don't need permission if you're having a G98 installation. So that's basically any installation that's 3.86 kilowatts or less, so which is basically 16 amps or less per phase. Still, regardless of what installation you're having, you still need to make sure that whatever installation you have is ENA standards compliant, which means it does power off in the event of a power outage so someone doesn't get zapped whilst working on the lines. You should have a circuit diagram available on site so if an engineer comes to site, they can clearly see what solar and batteries you have, where it's kind of wired up, how they can disable it. But with the G98, as long as your install is below 3.86 kilowatts, you can get it installed and then just basically do a G98 notification. You have to do that within 28 days of the installation happening. Majority of the time it's going to get approved without any issue. That's kind of factored in, I think, to how the network operates, but it can take up to eight weeks for you to get that approval documentation back. In my experience, at least in the past, lots of installers will be quite keen to tell you you don't need anything more um, than the 3.86 kilowatt installation, purely from the fact that they can just get on and do it. They haven't got to wait around getting a DNO um, G99 approval because your system is lower than 16 amps per phase. So that brings us on to the next stage. What happens if your installation you desire is more than 16 amps and more than 3.86 kilowatts? Then in that case, you do need to do a G99 DNO submission. And the key thing here is you can't have anything installed at all until you have your DNO approval and that G99 approval. And again, that's gonna take somewhere between 10 to 45 working days typically. Back five years ago, when it was a G59 application, it took 35 days, I think it was, for my application. This time, it was less than 24 hours. So really good, and obviously your installer can work uh, with your DNA to try and speed it up if possible, but that is the SLAs that they have. So the reason you're gonna need to have the G99 is because you're having a larger solar install, which is larger than 3.68 kilowatts. So you have to have permission for that before you make that installation. So in my previous house, it was a nine kilowatt solar array with a six kilowatt inverter. And then here it is a five, 5.2 kilowatt array uh, with a five kilowatt inverter. So again, because that's above 3.68, had to have DNO approval before that was installed. So I did have the approval for that. I had G99 approval which means I'm approved to have that installation and I'm also approved to export back to the grid at the full five kilowatts. Now, next one is the G100. So the G100 is basically um, related to limiting your limiting and controlling your generation and export. So you might have a, um, a G99 application that you put through for five kilowatts but you may have a G100 approval, which limits you to perhaps only um, three and a half kilowatts export, or perhaps you can't export at all. And so you have a G100 limitation. That means you can't do any export back to the grid. You must fully um, utilize all generation on the premises. And in that case, a lot of the devices that we have installed, the inverters, etc., will be G100 compliant devices. So in the software, they can manage how much they can or can't export. But there are situations where you'd have to have a separate hardware G100 module installed that would prohibit you from ex uh, exporting at the maximum your inverters and batteries could, but you know, limit it back down. So that's when you'd have a G100 limitation and need a G100 device. And so basically this applies to anything that you're connecting to the network. So as I mentioned earlier, if you've got an EV charger, you should do a DNO uh, notification. And if, if you've had that um, 3.86 kilowatt solar installation or less installed into the G98, that's going to be the same with batteries as well. So if you have just storage, you need to do the relevant DNO uh, notification as well based on the inverter and it's linked to the batteries. So for example, with the Give Energy uh, AC inverters, I think the maximum they can export is 3.6 kilowatts. So again, you could probably just do a G98 for that. If you had like a Tesla Powerwall 2 and you can export at five kilowatts, you'd need G99 approval for that. So 
it's not super complicated, but it's not also super easy to understand because we use all these different um, names and numbers and what have you. If you are curious to check that the devices that you're having installed are um, ENA standards compliant, you can go to the ENA type testing register. I'll put a link down to that in the description as well. But majority of the times, if you're going with reputable install and everything, they're gonna be using um, ENA standards compliant devices anyway, and you'll be able to see on that register where it's G100 compliant and everything like that. Also probably on the manufacturer's website as well. So I hope that helps. Short, maybe slightly confusing video, but at least something to reference um, if you're trying to understand why you're being asked for one thing or not. So 3.86 kilowatts or less, G98. Anything above that, it's going to be a G99. And if you are having some kind of limitation to how much you can export back to the grid, then it's going to be some form of G100 restriction. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comment section. I will read and get back to you. Perhaps you are uh, a solar installer or perhaps you work for a distribution network. Maybe I've maybe misquoted something. Feel free to clarify and confirm down in the comments as well. If you want to support the channel, please like, subscribe. Also consider becoming a Spectrum Geeks um, YouTube subscriber. 99 pence a month and you can cancel at any time you like. If you are also doing solar and batteries and everything, you might be looking to change your energy provider. If you're looking to move to Optimus Energy, please consider using my subscriber link down below. If you do so, both you and I get £50 credit to your bill. And last of all, thanks as always for watching. Take care of yourself until the next video. Goodbye for now.